Hey friends, today I'm going to read a true story that is a little bit different. It's not about history. This one's about science and it's about habitats and animal habitats and how every animal plays an important part, even if you don't realize it. You know those mosquitoes you really don't like? If we got rid of them, it would cause uh, some problems. So this is about the Pacific Ocean habitat and it focuses on otters and kelp and sea urchins. It's called If You Take Away the Otter. The author's name is Susanna Berman Deaver, illustrator Matthew Truman. I personally love science, as you know, and I love animals, so I think this is a great book. And I just got it. There's the otter swimming. On the Pacific coast of North America, which is where we live, in North America and on the Pacific coast, where the ocean meets the shore, there are forests that have no trees. These forests are not on land. They are ocean forests, forests of kelp. Kelp is a large marine algae, or seaweed. And I've eaten that before. It's pretty good. And I'm going to read these little little boxes here. It's not really a box, just a little text here. Like the plants we see on land, algae makes food from sunlight. There are many different types of algae. Some are just single cell, really tiny, and some are much larger, like kelp. If you've ever did, been to the beach, you might have seen some of this floating on the water. It is edible. Sometimes when I've been on the water in my kayak, I've just grabbed it right out of the water and eaten it. The kelp acts as the trees in these forests. It clings to the rocks at the bottom of the ocean and grows up toward the surface, sometimes reaching more than 100 feet tall, which is 30 meters. In between and under the towering kelp, smaller seaweeds grow alongside many different kinds of animals. Kelp forests are full of living things. So what do you think would happen if there no, were no kelp forests? Some animals eat them, some hide in them, some live in them. It says kelp grows near the shore where the water is cold and clear where the ocean floor is rocky. It attaches to the rocks with special parts called holdfast, which look a little bit like roots and keep the kelp from floating away in the waves. Some types of kelp can grow 30, meters in one, 30 centimeters in one day. Kelp forests help slow down strong waves, sheltering animals and protecting the shore from washing away. As I said before, sometimes it's easy to think things are like snakes or mosquitoes or roaches or other kind of bugs are really awful and we'd love to get rid of them. But everything plays its part in the habitat and they're super important. So here's what the kelp forest is doing. Keeping the waves from being too strong, protecting the shore. Abalones and clams, sea stars and octopuses, feathery sea worms and swarms of tiny swimming shrimp live in these forests. Crabs scuttle and snails slink up and down the kelp blades. Spiny sea urchins creep about on tiny feet. Thousands of tiny creatures can be found in and around a single kelp. Different parts of the kelp house different animals. Some creatures live near the holdfast on the ocean floor and some live on or around the leaf-like blades closer to the surface. Look at all these animals that rely on the kelp forest. There's so many animals under the sea that we never really get to look at. It's so fascinating. And swimming all around are fish. Shy kelpfish, big-eyed rockfish, and brightly spotted greenlings. Schools of silver herring and striped mackerel lay their eggs in these forests. Kelp forests are good places for young fish to grow up. There's lots of food, and there are many places to hide from predators. Sea lions and bald eagles fish these forests for their suppers. But the king of these forests, the hungriest hunter, is the sea otter. Otters dive into the deep and fill their bellies with fish and clams, snails and crabs, abalones and octopuses, and the prickly spiny sea urchins. A sea otter needs to eat a lot to help it keep warm, about a quarter of its own weight each day. If you ate like an otter, you would need to eat about 24 hamburgers every day. Well, that's a lot of burgers. I love otters. I think they're so cool. All living things in these forests are connected. The kelp and other seaweeds make homes and shelter for the animals. They provide food, too. Animals like abalone, snails, and sea urchins eat the kelp and seaweed, and some animals like sea otters eat other animals. There is just enough seaweed, enough seaweed eaters, and enough meat eaters to help the forest thrive. But there was a time when people took the otters away. People used to hunt otters because they liked their fur and they would use it to make things out of. Indigenous peoples had lived alongside otters for thousands and thousands of years. 
but new people came to this coast. They wanted this sea otter's fur, which is thick and soft and the warmest of warms. They wanted to sell it around the world. They took more and more, hunting the otters until almost all the otters were gone. Sea otters have the densest fur of any animal. There are about one million hairs in a space the size of a quarter. People do not always understand at first the changes they cause when they take too much. When they take the otters away, the kelp forest began to change. The international fur trade, which began after Russian explorers came to Alaska in 1741, changed everything. Thousands of indigenous people died from violence and disease. Fur companies forced some indigenous peoples like the Unangax, I'm not sure how to say that, they're Al Alouettes, Alouettes, to hunt for them. More otters were killed than ever before. Where once there were 150,000 to 300,000 sea otters, by 1911 only 1,000 to 2,000 survived. That's terrible. Very greedy. Without the otters to hunt the urchins, more urchins stayed alive each year. Those urchins made more and more urchins and more urchins than had lived in the forest before. An army of urchins, a, and it takes a lot to feed an army. So do you see how they're connected? When the otters eat the sea urchins, they're under control. So when things get out of control, it, it, it upsets the whole ecosystem. The urchin army crept along the ocean floor looking for its seaweed food. They ate the small seaweeds. They ate the kelp where it clung to the rocky bottom. One by one, the kelp was cut down. Kelp by kelp, ocean forest fell. Sea urchins usually eat drifting seaweed, but when there were a lot of sea urchins, they will also go after the kelp. They chew away at the hold fast, then the whole kelp breaks free and floats away. So while they're eating it, that means the other animals can't hide and use it for a food source also. Gone were the strands of towering kelp and shelter and food they gave. Gone were homes for the kelp forest fish and the safe hiding places for their babies and eggs. When kelp forests disappear, the number of kelp forest fish go down. When eagles can't find enough of those fish to eat, they hunt other birds instead. So see, it's not just the animals in the, in the water that are affected. Eagles were eating those fish and there weren't enough fish and then they started eating the other birds. When the ocean floor is covered with hungry urchins, any new kelp that starts to grow is quickly eaten. These places are called urchin barrens. So see, those are all the urchins. Usually they would be in the kelp forest, but now the kelp forest is gone. People do not always know at first why changes are happening beneath the waves, but they could see that otters were becoming harder and harder to find. And that made some people worry that the otters would, could disappear forever, which is called being extinct. So they made new laws to protect the few otters that were left. In 1911, the United States, Russia, Japan, and Great Britain signed the International Fur Seal Treaty, which stopped non-indigenous sea otter hunting and selling of otter furs. People worked hard to protect the remaining otters and made sure they had safe places to live. You know, we've lost a lot of animals in this world, and it's because people haven't taken care of them. And once they're gone, once they're extinct, they never come back. And slowly, slowly, the otters began to come back. And the otters, those hungry hunters, attacked and ate the urchin armies. With fewer urchins creeping about, new kelp could once again grow tall, dancing in the waves. Where the otters have come back, so have the kelp forest. When people protected the sea otters, they protected the forest. These forests are homes again for crabs and snails, sea worms and shrimps. They make safe places for the fish and their eggs. There is food for, sea for the seaweed eaters. There's food for the hunters. There's just enough of everything to help the, keep, to help the kelp forests and all that depend on them thrive. So if you're interested in learning more about the kelp forest, you can check out this book. and It has a whole bunch of information right here that you're welcome to read about. I thought that book was super interesting, and it shows how um, important the ecosystem is and how we all have to take care of it. All right, happy reading, friends.